name is Arianne Huggins. Um, this is week four's video. Um, so the first question is based on your first impressions of the patient's actions and appearance. What do you su suspect that she is suffering from? Um, so I said that the 54-year-old female patient seems to be very confused at what she as what is going on around her. Um, it would be apparent that she has some type of mental disorder or illness um, along with a substance abuse problem. Mental illness can be very challenging to detect, but there are some major signs that this patient is showing that make it easier for you to tell. I would honestly think that she would be diagnosed with on the schizophrenia spectrum, most likely a schizophrenia form disorder or substance or medication induced psychotic disorder. Uh, so the reasoning behind this is that she found is that she was found wandering around a park. She was confused. She was screaming obscenities. Um, she had, you know, a stale body order to her. She had loss of balance. She was very disoriented, combated, um, and she was al also asking for a bottle. So this actually tells us a lot about the patient and what she could be possibly dealing with. For one, when a patient has a schizophreniform disorder, they tend to um, they tend to have like disoriented speech. They're pacing a lot, walking in circles, and they have poor hygiene, uh, which would explain why people were pretty worried about her in the park and called 911 for some professional help. Uh, the people in the park, park probably thought that they could be in danger as well as she would be endangered to herself. Uh, so all. As for having the substance or medication-induced psychotic disorder, um, I say this because she was yelling at healthcare staff that she needed a bottle, uh, which probably indicated some type of alcohol. Uh, with this disorder, patients come down with an altered state of mind, which then causes them to have the mental disorder. It would seem that she would be experiencing negative symptoms if she was truly diagnosed on the schizophrenia spectrum. This would be due to her argumentative, um, and aggressive behavior. Overall, she would probably need to be evaluated by um, a psych provider. So for number two, it says, what short-term or long-term health risks would you expect this patient faces? Um, so if this 54-year-old patient was truly diagnosed with schizophrenia form disorder or substance um, or medication-induced psychotic disorder, she would eventually come out of it. Um, so what I mean by this is this disorder is actually a short-term disease, unlike schizophrenia, which is, um, uh, which is, schizophrenia is actually for the patient's entire life. They'll never get rid of it. Uh, this is a mental illness grouped as what is called psychosis, and thankfully schizophrenia disorder lasts um, anywhere in between one to six months. So due to the patient asking for a bottle, it would seem that she probably would also have a substance abuse problem. So um, we can make it super clear that the schizophrenia form disorder and the substance or medication induced psychotic disorder are two completely different illnesses uh, with the same symptoms. However, schizophrenia form disorder cannot be caused by substance or medication induced psychotic disorder. Uh, so what this means, individuals expressing psychotic behaviors that are caused by um, the use of drugs or alcohol would be diagnosed with substance or medication-induced psychotic disorder. Therefore, the use of laboratory tests are used to determine the presence of the drug or alcohol that's present in the, body, in the patient's system, and that's the only way to differentiate between the two disorders. Um, as these symptoms tend to come on very quickly, the patient will be treated with several drugs that include um, mood stabilizers, anti-anxiety medications um, that can be super helpful in treating this disorder. Uh, patients can also really benefit from therapeutic care, um, especially with this patient, we can assume she has an alcohol addiction. Mixing alcohol with a mental disorder will only make the symptoms worse. Sometimes treatments like personal therapy, group therapy, family therapy, holistic treatment, and 12-step programs can aid in helping the patient overcome the disorder. Long-term, however, the patient may actually end up being diagnosed with schizophrenia. According to the American Psych Psychiatric Association, 
About two thirds of people with schizophrenia form disorder develop schizophrenia, which they will have for their entire lives. So question three states, why do you think the patient's hands are shaking and what do you think causes her confusion and combativeness? Um, so this is a pretty loaded question. Um, our patient uh, also came in with shaking hands. This symptom is considered a non-pacific symptom, meaning it is actually a common symptom for many different ailments. However, if we're going to go off the patient having a mental illness along with a substance abuse problem, we can relate those symptoms to those. So we're gonna start with um, the patient's alcohol addiction. When a patient is an alcoholic and experiences withdrawals, uh, they can experience a tremor in their hands, also known as alcohol shakes. Um, we can also take into consideration that this patient was out wandering in the park. We do not know how long she was wandering the streets or even if she has a place to call home. Therefore, the shaky hands could be due from a general lack of weakness, fatigued, or being malnourished. Um, lastly, generally with this disorder, the patient will experience low energy and likely have little, little energy to take care of themselves properly, therefore leading to the shaky hands. Uh, we can also look at why the patient would be confused or display combativeness towards the healthcare workers. Again, this can be due to her low energy and lacking of taking care of herself. If she's not getting enough sleep, if she consumes a poor diet, this would definitely lead to her being aggressive or even agitated. Uh, the confusion would go along with the schizophrenia form disorder and the substance abuse issue. Um, our patient may be experiencing hallucinations uh, or just disillusions um, from her disorder, causing it, it to be very difficult to interact with people around her. She may also be simply intoxicated and lashing out because of her altered state of mind. So overall, you can see that there are many factors that play into this patient's particular symptoms. Um, number four says, what assessments do you think are needed for this patient? Um, so for any mental illness to be detected and treated properly, they need to be diagnosed correctly. In order to do so, they must make sure that there are no underlying causes um, of the patient's symptoms. Therefore, the provider will use various diagnostic, diagnostic tests to rule out any physical illness as a cause of the patient's symptoms. Um, they'll also take blood tests on the patient to make sure that they're not intoxicated with anything. Once the analysis is performed and the patient doesn't have any other lying causes, then the patient would be referred to a psychiatrist or psychologist. Um, where they will be um, diagnosed based on the um, observation of the person's attitude and behavior and, you know, if there's any family history or anything like that. And then the last question is a research question. Uh, mental illness management includes both pharmacological and therapeutic uh, methods for treatment. Summarize how this is managed and the support of insurance. Is it sufficient? Could it be made better? Be Specific. Um, so mental illnesses, mental illness management includes both pharmacological and therapeutic methods for treatment. Summarize how this is managed and support of insurance. Um, so with any medication or therapeutic method, insurance can be denied um, by the patient or can be denied um, for several different reasons. For instance, uh, many of these pharmacological agents are very expensive, therefore the patient will be denied by insurance and told to try a cheaper option. This is where things can get really tricky because if a particular medication works for a patient and they don't have an option of taking a cheaper drug, um, then they'll need to go towards a prior authorization uh, where you appeal your denial based on your care of needs for your benefits. Um, the insurance may also require the patient to prove that it is medically necessary for them to have therapeutic methods. Um, however, since 2014, most individual and small group health insurance plans, including plans sold on the market, are required to cover mental health and some substance abuse um, services. Therefore, patients with insurance should have little to no trouble getting both the pharmacological and therapeutic methods for their treatment, which I think is a great um, that most insurance will cover mental health as it affects so many people. However, I don't believe that this is sufficient. Um, I say this because I work for a primary care office in Apache Junction. Um, I have many people that walk in 
displaying mental illnesses um, but they're not our patient and anytime we ask them if they do have insurance they deny that they do um, so according to a 2015 assessment by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, a minimum of 140,000 homeless people were seriously mentally ill. This is a staggering number of people um, who need help but are unable to get it because they don't have insurance. And some of these people are homeless because of their mental illness. So as you can see, there are flaws to our health insurance, but overall, if you do have health insurance, um, you can get the help that you need. So. Overall, those are all my questions. Um, I listed the references on my paper. Thank you.